सी आई ई टी एन सी आर टी प्रेजेंट ऑडियो बुक फुटप्रिंट्स विदाउट फीट सप्लीमेंट्री रीडर इन इंग्लिश फॉर क्लास टेन नाउ लेट्स लिसन टू चैप्टर सिक्स टाइटल इज द मेकिंग ऑफ अ साइंटिस्ट पेज थर्टी टू चैप्टर सिक्स द मेकिंग ऑफ अ साइंटिस्ट अबाउट द राइटर Richard Adbright has received the Searle Scholar Award and the Skebing Plow Award for biochemistry and molecular biology. It was his fascination for butterflies that opened the world of science to him. Read and find out. 1. How did a book become a turning point in Richard Adbright's life? 2. How did his mother help him? At the age of 22, a former scout of the year excited the scientific world with a new theory of how cells work. Richard H. Adbright and his college roommate explained the theory in an article of the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science. It was the first time this important scientific journal had ever published the work of college students in sports that would be like making a big leagues at the age of 15 and hitting a home run your first year at bat for richard edbright it was the first in a long string of achievements in science and other fields and it all started with butterflies An only child, Ed Bright grew up north of Reading, Pennsylvania. There wasn't much I could do there, he said. I certainly couldn't play football or baseball with a team of one, but uh, there was one thing I could do: collect things. So he did, and did he ever? Beginning in kindergarten, Ed Bright collected butterflies. with the same determination that has marked all his activities he also collected rocks fossils and coins he became an eager astronomer too sometimes star gazing at night now the footnote a home run in the game of a baseball is when the batter scores a run after running safely around all bases and back to the home plate without stopping a ball hit out by the playing field is also called a home run getting a paper published at the age of 15 in a scientific journal is here compared to scoring a home run while batting for the first time page 33 From the first he had a driving curiosity along with a bright mind he also had a mother who encouraged his interest in learning she took him on trips bought him telescopes microscopes cameras mounting materials and other equipments and helped him in many other ways i was his only companion until he started school his mother said After that I would bring home friends for him but at night we just did things together Richie was my whole life after his father died when Richie was in third grade She and her son spent almost every evening at the dining room table If he didn't have things to do I found work for him not physical work but learning things his mother said He liked it. He wanted to learn. And learn he did. He earned top grades in school. On every day things he was just like every other kid, his mother said. By the time he was in the second grade, Ed Bright had collected all 25 species of the butterflies found around his hometown. See the following box. A box is given here 
and the title of the box is Species and Subspecies of Butterflies Collected in Six Weeks in Reading, Pennsylvania. And you can see this box. So we come to number one. Gossamer winged butterflies. One, white M hair streak. Two, Acadian hair streak. Three, bronze copper. Four, bog copper. Five, purplish copper. Six, eastern tailed blue. Seven, Melissa blue. Eight, silvery blue. Snout butterfly. Now the second column. Wood knives and satires. One, eyed brown. Two, wood knife. Three, monarchs. Monarch or milkweed. Whites and sulphurs. Is Olympia. Cloudless sulphur. European cabbage. And the third column is brush footed butterflies. Number one, variegated fritillary. Two, Harris's checker post. Three, pearl crescent. Four, morning cloak. Next, painted lady. And the next, buck eye. Then, viceroy. Then, white admiral. And then, of course, red spotted purple and the last one is hackberry that probably would have been the end of my butterfly collecting he said but then my mother got me a children's book called the travels of monarch 10 that book which told how monarch butterflies migrate to central america opened the world of science to the eager young collector Page number 34. At the end of the book, readers were invited to help study butterfly migrations. They were asked to tag butterflies for research by Dr. Frederick A. A Yurke Hort of the University of Toronto, Canada, Adbright's mother wrote to Dr. Yurke Hort, and soon Adbright was attaching light adhesive tags to the wings of monarchs. Anyone who find a tagged butterfly was asked to send a tag to Dr. Eurohort. The butterfly collecting session around reading last six weeks in last summer. See graph below. If you are going to chase them one by one, you won't catch very many. So the next step for Edbright was to raise a flock of butterflies. He would catch a female monarch take her eggs and raise them in a basement through their life cycle, from egg to caterpillar to pupa to adult butterfly. Then he would tag the butterfly's wings and let them go. For several years, his basement was home to thousands of monarchs in different stages of development. And we can see the box here. The title of the box is Number and Kinds of Butterflies Collected in Six Weeks. Number one is uh, gossamer winged. Number two is uh, wood nymphs and satyrs. Number three is brush footed. Number four, whites and sulphurs. Six, monarch. And seven is snout. And we can see in this box below that the total numbers collected are given. And the total number is ten. And this number 10 goes to brush footed. Eventually, I began to lose interest in tagging butterflies. It's tedious and uh, there is not much feedback, Ed Bright said. In all the time I did it, he laughed. Only two butterflies I had tagged were recaptured, and they were not more than 75 miles from where I lived. Read and find out. 1. What lesson does Edbright learn when he does not win anything at a science fair? Number 2. What experiments and projects does he then undertake? Number 3. What are the qualities that go into the making of a scientist? Page number 35. 
Then in the seventh grade, he got a hint of what real science is when he entered a country science fair. He lost. It was really a sad feeling to sit there and not yet anything while everybody else had won something, Ed Bright said. His entry was slide of frog tissues, which he showed under a microscope. He realized the winners had tried to do real experiments, not simply make a neat display. Already the competitive spirit that drives Richard Ed Bright was appearing. I knew that uh, for the next year's fair, I would have to do a real experiment, he said. The subject I knew most about was the insect work I had been doing in the past several years. So he wrote to Dr. Yurkohart for ideas and back came a stack of suggestions for experiments. Those kept at Bright busy all through high school and led to prize projects in country and international science fairs. For his eighth grade project, Ed Bright tried to find the cause of a viral disease that kills nearly all monarch caterpillars every few years. Ed Bright thought the disease might be carried by a beetle. He tried raising caterpillars in the presence of beetles. I didn't get any real result, he said. But I went ahead and showed that I had tried the experiment. This time I won. The next year his science fair project was testing the theory that viceroy butterflies copy monarchs. The theory was that viceroys look like monarchs because monarchs don't taste good to birds. Viceroys, on the other hand, do taste good to birds. So the more they look like monarchs, the less likely they are to become a bird's dinner. Ed Bright's project was to see whether, in fact, birds would eat monarchs. He found that a starling would not eat ordinary bird food. He would eat all the monarchs it could get. Ed Bright said later research by other people showed that Viceroy probably do copy the monarch. This project was placed first in the geology division and third overall in the country science fair. In this picture, on the top we can see the picture of a monarch butterfly, whether in the bottom we can see the viceroy butterfly. And uh, this picture gives a striking comparison between both. Page number 36. In his second year in high school, Richard Edbright began the research that led to his discovery to an unknown insect hormone. Indirectly, it also led to his new theory on the life of cells. The question he tried to answer was simple. What is the purpose of the 12 tiny gold spots on a monarch pupa? Everyone assumed the spots were just ornamental. Ed Bright said, but uh, Dr. Yurkehart didn't believe it. To find the answer, Ed Bright and another excellent science student first had to build a device that showed that spots were producing a hormone necessary for the butterfly's full development. The project won at bright first place in the country fair and entry into the International Science and Engineering Fair. There he won third place for geology. He also got a chance to work during the summer at the etymology laboratory of the Walter Reed Army Institute of Research. As a high school junior, Richard Ed Bright continued his advanced experiments on the monarch pupa. That year, his project won first place at the International Science Fair and gave him another chance to work in the Army laboratory during the summer. In his senior year, he went a step further. He grew cells from a monarch's wing in a culture and showed that the cells would divide and develop into normal butterfly wing scales 
only if they were fed the hormone from the gold spots. That project won first place for geology at the International Fair. He spent the summer after graduation doing further work at the Army Laboratory and at Laboratory of the U.S. Department of Agriculture. The following summer, after the freshman year at Howard University, Ed Bright went back to the laboratory of the Department of Agriculture and did more work on the hormone from the gold spots using the laboratory's sophisticated instruments. He was able to identify the hormone's chemical structure. A year and a half year during his junior year, Ed Bright got the idea for his new theory about cell life. It came while he was looking at X-ray photos of the chemical structure of a hormone. When he saw those photos, Ed Bright didn't shout Eureka or even I have got it. But he believed that uh, along with his findings about insects' hormones, the photos gave him the answer to one of biology's puzzles, how the cell can read the blueprint of its DNA. DNA is the substance of the nucleus of a cell that controls heredity. It determines the form and function of the cell. Thus, DNA is the blueprint for life. Page 37 Ed Bright and his college roommate James R. Wong worked all the night drawing pictures and constructing plastic models of molecules to show how it could happen. Together, they later wrote the paper that explained the theory. Surprising no one who knew him, Richard Ed Bright graduated from Howard with highest honors. Second in his class of 1510, Ed Bright went on to become a graduate student researcher at Howard Medical School. There he began doing experiments to test his theory. If the theory proves correct, it will be a big step towards understanding the process of life. It might also lead to new ideas for preventing some types of cancer and other diseases. All of this is possible because of Ed Bright's scientific curiosity. His high school research into the purpose of the spot on a monarch pupa eventually led him to his theory about cell life. Richard Ed Bright has been interested in science since he first began collecting butterflies, but not so deeply that he hasn't time for other interests. Ed Bright also became a champion debater and public speaker and a good canonist and all-around outdoors person. He is also an expert photographer, particularly of nature and scientific exhibits. In high school, Richard Ed Bright was a straight, a student, because learning was easy. He turned a lot of his energy towards the debating and model United Nations clubs. He also found someone to admire, Richard A. Weyher, his social studies teacher and advisor to both clubs. Mr. Weyher was a perfect person for me then. He opened my mind to new ideas, Ed Bright said. Richard would always give that extra effort, Mr. Weyher said. What pleased me was, here was this person who put in three or four hours at night doing debate research beside doing all the research with butterflies and his other interests. Richard was competitive, Mr. Weyherer continued, but not in a bad sense. He explained, Richard wasn't interested in winning for winning's sake or winning to get a prize. Rather, he was winning because he wanted to do the best job he could. For the right reasons, he wants to be the best. And uh, that is one of the ingredients in the making of a scientist. Start with a first-rate mind. Add curiosity and mix in the will to win for the right reason. 
Edvlide has these qualities. From the time the book, The Travels of Monarch X, opened the world of science to him, Richard Edvlide has never lost his scientific curiosity. By Robert W. Peterson The Making of a Scientist Page number 38 Glossary Leagues means groups of sports, clubs or teams playing matches among themselves. Country means region. Startling means common European bird with black brown spotted plumage which nests near building and is a good mimic. Etymology means the study of insects. Eureka, a cry of triumph at a discovery originally attributed to Archimedes. Canoeist, a person who paddles a canoe, a light boat. Think about it. 1. How can one become a scientist, an economist, a historian? Does it simply involve reading many books on a subject? Does it involve observing, thinking and doing experiments? 2. You must have read about cells and DNA in your science books. Discuss Richard Edbright's work in the light of what you have studied. If you get an opportunity to work like Richard Edbright on projects and experiments, which field would you like to work on and why? Talk about it. 1. Children everywhere wander about the world around them. The questions they ask are beginning of scientific inquiry. Given below are some questions that children in India have asked Professor Yashpal and Dr. Rahul Pal as reported in their book, Discovered Questions, NCERT 2006. Question number one that the children have asked, What is DNA fingerprinting? What are its uses? Question two, How do honeybees identify their own honeycombs? Three, Why does rain fall in drops? Can you answer these questions? You will find Professor Yashpal's and Dr. Rahul's answer as given in Discovered Questions on page 75. 2. You also must have wondered about certain things around you. Share these questions with your class and try and answer them. Suggested Readings Suggestion 1. Journey by Night by Nora Burke 2. Children Who Made It Big by Thangamani 3. School Days by Tom Brown You were just listening to Footprints Without Feet, Supplementary Reader in English for Class 10. Production Assistance Soumya Malik Read and Produced by Ajit Horo this audiobook is presented to you by CIET NCERT New Delhi India